LeBron James is leading the NBA in assists with 10.7 assists per game and can make pretty much any pass you ask him to make on a basketball court. Looks like he's having a lot of fun this year, spraying the ball around, getting his teammates involved. He's also assisting on 48.3% of the Lakers made baskets. In this breakdown, we're going to look at how he gets his teammates open and how his court vision leads to easy scoring opportunities. My name is Coach Gibson Piper. You can follow me on Twitter at Half Court Hoops. The stats and the video are taken from NBA League Pass and NBA.com as well as CleanTheGlass.com. For more information, check out those websites as well as the links for different articles and things that I found useful when doing my research on this breakdown below. One of the things I love about LeBron is when he first gets the ball, he's always looking up the court. His eyes are always downhill, looking for any easy passing opportunities. In this scenario, he notices Anthony Davis streaking down the floor for an easy layup. Now, it helps to have a player like Anthony Davis to throw these passes to, for sure, but his ability to make two-hand chess passes from free throw line to free throw line is outstanding. Here we can see Anthony Davis contest a three-point shot when he's switched out, and what's going to happen is he's going to leak out after this three-point contest. LeBron's going to get the ball from McGee and end up firing a pass downhill, knowing that Anthony Davis was running down court after the contest. One thing I love is how he will look to hit early guys early and often and the rim runner but the biggest thing is his ability to look off defenders early in transition so Danny Green's running to the corner here LeBron's going to look off Wilson Chandler like he's going to throw the ball for a corner three and throw a no look lob pass to Dwight Howard for an easy layup if the early rim run is not available or it's kind of like their secondary transition what they look for next is a deep seal or a quick post up here we can see anthony davis sealing his man on the high side nobody's below him lebron's going to find him for an easy two-hand dunk next what they're going to do is try and get him sealing whether it's early in an offense early in a possession but also be able to recognize when they have mismatches early in transition and be able to post up so here we're going to see mcgee's running with Fultz on him on the weak side left side here lebron's going to fake across opposite and look off the defender in this scenario who's taking kuzma in transition this allows for no defense to be able to help on this lob pass to mcgee for an easy finish LeBron's outlet passes and first looks in offense are always going to be to try and find an easy scoring opportunity at the rim, typically for guards who have either leaked out or have gotten behind the defense by sprinting in transition or in different scenarios, trying to get guards an easy scoring opportunity. And it allows for some of the easiest finishes you're going to get in the game of basketball. Even after makes, the Lakers do a good job of exploiting this. If you don't get back on time, uh, you can see him and Danny Green here for a layup. And it really puts pressure on the defense where as soon as they get the ball, especially if LeBron rebounds it, you know that the pass is going to be made ahead to an open teammate and they're going to take advantage of you if you don't get back on defense right away. Since we just looked at how the early pressure at the rim forces the defense to collapse a little bit, the next logical breakdown is his pitch ahead passes or passes up on the wing most of the time for catch and shoot opportunities for guards or to get the defense cross match for three point shooting opportunities. So you can see as the Jazz do not recover here, Danny Green ends up shooting a wide open three. Same thing here against the Thunder, finding Green on the almost the exact same spot. So being able to get up the floor and look ahead early and often and now finding shooters after the defense has collapsed inside the paint or even if they fall asleep, LeBron will all automatically look to the paint and then look to the wing next. When LeBron starts attacking in transition, one of the things that he's really good at is the bounce pass. And 
the tough part about a bounce pass and transition is getting it to land where the player can catch and make an easy finish. And he recognizes the different angles and opportunity he has to pass it and make a good on time and on target pass. Generally speaking, most of the time he's going to be able to hit the player in stride and allow it to have them hit their hands so they can just go right up for an easy layup and an easy scoring opportunity. Whether it's an overhead, wrap around, or just a simple two hand bounce pass, he can make all the passes in transition. The last and most logical pass in transition is the trail man. This is typically a guard. Uh, can be a big who is trailing the play. LeBron will typically try and get an early push. So as we can see here, Anthony Davis becomes the rim run. He finds Dwight as the trail man for a dunk. Here we can see an early push in transition. He's going to hit Kuzma as the trail man who attacks. And is going to basically get this not as often as the other opportunities in transition, but a good action to get the trail man involved and trying to exploit the defense if they do a good job collapsing in transition defense. One of the things I like about LeBron off the ball is his recognition to find cutters. So in this scenario, we can see that Zeller is zoned up once LeBron catches the ball, and McGee does a good job flashing behind him into space, catches it and finishes it with a nice floater. LeBron attacking early in offense here. We can see him get downhill. Anthony Davis is actually turned around, whereas some players might try to fire this pass over the top. LeBron does a good job staying patient, throws up a pump fake to allow Davis to turn and recover and see the ball and finishes with the layup. Off the ball here, he recognizes Anthony Davis open on the roll, steps into the pass and fires a nice bounce pass. He's had pretty good chemistry with Kuzma, who has been a good cutter off the ball earlier this season. He's able to find him in different scenarios in space and hit him for easier scoring opportunities and recognizing when he's able to cut into space has been big for Kuzma. LeBron seems to trust him off the ball in the mid-range, and it always just seems that he sets up teammates for the easiest scores possible and allows the bigs to make easy finish and scores around the rim. One of the ways LeBron makes it easy for the bigs to finish is what I call pro passes. I stole this term from a college coach when I was observing their practice. They rep this action in their four-out drive and kick game. It is essentially drive to the rim and throw it up to the basket to allow the big to finish easy around the rim. And it's essentially if you drive baseline, you're going to throw it to the middle of the rim. And if you drive in the middle, you're going to throw it to the side that the big is on, almost to the corner of the backboard, just allowing the big to go up and make a play for an easy dunk. LeBron's ability to hit cutters off the ball, especially when they cut back door, is awesome. Here we can see Danny Green setting this flare screen. The Magic do a good job of not switching it, but as soon as the defender gets on the high side here, we can see Green recognizes it and has space to cut into. LeBron does a good job recognizing that as well and leading him with a chest pass. Notice how it hits Danny Green in stride so he doesn't have to hesitate and can go right up for an easy layup. One of the players that LeBron seems to be connecting with often in the backdoor cut scenario is Avery Bradley, who has always been a really good off-ball cutter when his defender falls asleep, and LeBron's ability to make tough passes from long distances is really impressive. Another way LeBron and Anthony Davis connect is through the backdoor spin lob. They will typically look to come down after a stoppage in play or after a free throw scenario and look to post up Anthony Davis you know, in a quick post up or just get him a touch. If the defense is jamming it or overplaying it, Anthony Davis will spin to the basket and uh, look to get catch a quick alley-oop. It's something that they've run uh, for Anthony Davis in, in New Orleans and uh, has continued here since. If he gets switched off, they look to maybe throw the lob over the top. But uh, an easy way for LeBron to connect with Anthony Davis and just look for him early and often is to uh, just kind of throw it up and let an athlete be an athlete and let him finish with an easy layup. LeBron also has a great ability to recognize where the help comes from on drives. Here we can see Lakers are spaced in five out. Help comes from the slot, so he finds Kuzma for an open three. Generally speaking, when he drives, he's going to try and find guys in the corner. So you'll see him drive into the lane. Help the helper comes, and he'll try to find like Danny Green, Avery Bradley, 
you know, KCP in the corners, depending on the different teams that they're playing. But you can see here, patience. He immediately looks to the corner, finds Danny Green for an open three. A type of ball screen the Lakers run a lot is the high ball screen with both bigs in the game, one up top, set in the screen, and one in the short corner. This is going to also create a shake or single tag read. Here, the read is the big helping low or the player in the single tag action. The player tags that allows the roll man to be open. So this will also create some spacing problems, but LeBron is usually strong enough to handle those and can go through and fight through that contact. But this allows for the two big lineup to play at the same time. If the guard helps off of the corner, then that is a corner three read. So you can see here as LeBron drives in, he hits the corner. It was deflected, but good patience and pump fake there by Danny Green. Another option they have out of this is the pick and pop with Anthony Davis. So we can see Steven Adams is in drop ball screen coverage. He's going to be sagging off. That allows for an easy pick and pop opportunity. One of the things in this pick and pop opportunity you'll see is watch LeBron drive downhill to force the defender of Anthony Davis to react a little bit and this allows for an easier read and scoring opportunity. If you want to be an elite playmaker in the NBA you have to know how to run spread pick and roll. It's a staple of every offense and pretty much every play involves some sort of ball screen. When the Lakers have two bigs on the court, you're going to see the defense load up off of Anthony Davis, as Siakam does here at the nail, leaving Davis open at the three-point line. And LeBron does a good job recognizing these situations and finding Anthony Davis open in spread pick-and-roll situations. The defense is going to leave him open because he is the lesser of the three shooters from three in their spread pick-and-roll three-guard lineup with Anthony Davis being spaced. If you want to know more about how a ball screen works, I did a ball screen clinic breakdown that I don't really want to rehash now, but it's a good 45 minute video that explains exactly how a ball screen works. What I love about LeBron is how he is just patient and he tweaks the defense to set it up to how he wants it. So in this scenario, it looks like, you know, initially there is nothing there. So running it back, as LeBron comes off this pick and roll, we can see the Spurs are going to be in kind of drop coverage, allowing him to go inside. He ends up setting up the defense and forcing the game to put two on the ball. What he does is there, there's nothing open here right now. The Spurs actually do a pretty good job. But what he does is pump fake, gets the defenders in the air, creates a pocket of space, and hits McGee on the roll. Again here, he's being patient. Uh, the Warriors are in ice coverage. They get a weak side exchange. And he hits Dudley behind the back. Now, he didn't have to throw it behind the back, but it was the most efficient pass because of the way the Warriors were defending this and hitting a wide open shooter in rhythm behind the back is a tough pass to make. He can make any tough pass in ball screens, pocket passes. You'll see him drive inside, hit wraparound passes for the bigs on the roll. And then when you help off of those shooters, his ability to not only hit shooters, but jump in the air at the same time and be able to be patient and also have that balance at a player his size is absolutely incredible. Probably the hardest action to guard is a side ball screen involving Anthony Davis and LeBron James. Now, they will run this with other players, but the side ball screen here that Anthony Davis is setting with the floor empty is one of the hardest actions to guard when it involves LeBron and Anthony Davis. When LeBron turns his corner here, he's got so many options. He can drive right to the rim. If the big helps, he hits the roller, and he's got shooters spaced out on the opposite side of the floor, so if you help off one of them, he can find them in space as well. Here, LaMarcus Aldridge helps. Anthony Davis is open on the roll. If teams do a good job taking away this side ball screen on like the roll or the dive, you can see Valanchunas is zoned up here in drop coverage. Anthony Davis is a pick and pop threat. He can pump fake and attack the rim. If the players are going to be sagged off on the weak side, so you can see as LeBron comes off, he finds Avery Bradley for an open three. So he'll be able to drive and kick and turn the corner. So if you do a good job of taking the roll man away and then helping off of that, you see LeBron is able to find weak side shooters for open threes all night long. The most common way that teams will defend this is with ice ball screen defense. So you're going to see the def defense is in ice or forcing LeBron to the baseline. He'll do a good job of tacking downhill and then finding the roll man on lobs. If you are going to try and take this action away, what he's going to be able to do is just kind of get you in the wrong position and manipulate and tweak things. So here you can see him 
moving Caldwell Pope out of the way because he knows the Pelicans are going to ice side ball screens. So he gets Anthony Davis involved in a little two-man side pick and roll. The ice coverage is there. He's going to attack favors. Anthony Davis is going to be open in this pocket of space. So as LeBron notices that, he fires an early pass, hits Anthony Davis for an easy finish from mid-range. And then again, same thing here against the the Thunder. He's going to drive baseline against the ice coverage. And what he's going to do is take Gallinari down to the baseline with him. And what this does, this allows Anthony Davis to get above the ice coverage or big above and allow for open three-point jump shots. Another solution that teams will try is to switch the ball screen. So here we can see LeBron gets Cantor switched out onto him. And what he'll do is he'll figure out where the advantage is and move players around to the spots that he wants them in. So here you can see him telling Dwight Howard to go opposite in the short corner and then manipulate the shooters in their positions. And what's going to happen is as he beats Cantor off the dribble, Kemba Walker is going to sag in the paint. And that leaves an open three-point jump shooter in the corner for a corner three. Another example of this against the Pistons down late is when he gets this ball screen here, he's going to get a switch. He's going to clear out the floor and space players where he wants them. So you can see Anthony Davis go to the ball side corner. Dwight's going to stay in the opposite short corner. And LeBron is going to look like he's going to shoot this three here. So as he steps back, he notices Drummond is sagging off Anthony Davis. He's actually going to look like he's going to pull up for a three with a late shot clock. Fire a quick pass for a corner three, catching Drummond sleeping. When driving in isolation, he does a great job of manipulating the defenders to do what he wants to do. So here you can see he goes up like he's going to shoot the ball. And when he goes up to shoot here, he gets Gasol up in the air, dishes off to McGee who drives and finishes with a dunk. Against the Hornets here, it looks like he does similar action where he just drives in and then dishes to Dwight. But if we look back on this clip, what we're actually going to see is how he manipulates the help. So as LeBron drives here, the Hornets do a good job of stepping up as Marvin Williams steps up and helps. Then we have a help the helper off of the corner shooter who takes the big. And what that's going to be is a simple read for a corner kick out three. But what LeBron does is ensure they get a, a score is jumps in the air, forces the defender to make a decision either in the corner or on the big, and then dishes to Dwight for an easy dunk. Next, we'll look at post-up scenarios in which LeBron finds cutters. In this clip, it's pretty unclear of who's going to be open. These are the three players involved in the screening actions. But LeBron is so patient and letting the play kind of play out. He notices here that Danny Green's man overplays him. And this doesn't look open right now, but LeBron anticipates him cutting back door and beats the defense for an easy layup. Here we can see the Thunder do a good job of loading up or tilting the defense towards LeBron's post up. LeBron sees all four players are in good help position, but notices that Chris Paul falls asleep on the weak side and hits KCP for an easy layup. If LeBron notices you have a weakness in your defense, for instance, he burns the Kings here twice on the same exact action, he's going to keep exploiting that over and over and over again. And even if you try and double team him, it's just not going to work. So here they come with a double team guard to guard from the strong side. That leaves Avery Bradley, who's a good cutter, diving right into space. LeBron hits him on time and on target. Teams will often try and trap. And if they do, they try and trap big to big. So here we can see down low, the Pacers are going to come with a big to big double on the weak side. LeBron notices that and then is going to find Dwight Howard with a pro pass, throwing it above the rim, not allowing the, the weak side guard to get in there. Here he sees Draymond on the back side of McGee. He's going to fire a lob pass because Draymond cheats to the corner. And in this scenario, Jokic does a good job of zoning up. So LeBron's going to attack baseline first and then find Dwight on that pro pass, throwing it directly over Jokic. LeBron also does a good job of recognizing when the skip pass is available. So here we can see Buddy Heald's going to kind of kind of come, but not really. He's going to shade towards LeBron. LeBron sees that and just fires a skip pass to Caruso and then forces a long closeout with Caruso hitting the three. When teams do a good job of helping, so you can see Steven Adams coming baseline side. Chris Paul is going to be on McGee. LeBron skips it to Danny Green, who ends up hitting a pretty tough three, but an open three nonetheless. If you overhelp, he's going to fire a bullet pass over your head to the opposite corner. He's just able to manipulate and read the defense no matter what they're in, which leads us to the Lakers' zone offense. And we can see as LeBron fires a quick pass at Anthony Davis in the high post, that is the weak spot of the zone, a high post short corner. We can see he's good at finding players flashing in and out of that high post. And when 
the high post is covered. He does a good job of countering that by finding players on the backside for lobs. So you're going to see Dwight Howard is going to be open on this backside here as the high post is occupied. And again, as Anthony Davis flashes, he's able to find Howard for an easy dunk. They will also do a good job of putting LeBron in the high post and allow him to be a playmaker. Here you can see him a little high-low action with a quick bounce pass to Dwight. And then again, as he catches in the high post, Dwight's going to kind of seal low and be able to have high-low action here. And then when the high-low action is covered, like in this scenario, he catches the ball in the high post. Ben Simmons does a good job of taking Dwight away, but that's going to leave the wing open for Avery Bradley. So LeBron recognizes that after looking and fires a pass outside to open shooters. He's going to be able to do this no matter what defense you play. Flash to the high post, look and see what you have, and then find shooters in the corner for three. Thank you so much for checking out my LeBron James court vision breakdown. I hope I shed a little more light into how special of a passer he is and how awesome he's been this season. If you have any questions or any thoughts, please hit me up on Twitter at Half Court Hoops. Drop a comment below. Feel free to subscribe. I'll be doing more of these breakdowns. If you have any video suggestions or something that you would like to see, I'm always open to that. Please just let me know. I hope everybody has a great rest of the day, and I'll talk to you guys next time.